due to the lens law of an opposing force, then we're looking at negative mass, which is what results in overcoming a force that prevents mass from traveling faster than light. What you're looking at is the Alexis Gravifier. Grubinoco's platform, Sufic generator, and Schoenberg's device. We've heard a lot about these anti gravity platforms, which friendly data study think you code magneto hydrodynamics. I probably know what we're thinking right now. In the latest video, we have seen a lot more about this topic called magneto hydrodynamics, where I even mentioned this thing called conductivity. I know you guys like that video, but maybe a question right now is what if the OT61 and these other fine platforms have other energy that we can use and still be successful? That question is exactly what this video is about. We are going to go a little deeper in those energies and then we go even farther to other interesting explanations about the OT61 that I think will also help you do your own research. This video is gonna be a little bit short and interesting, so you better stick with me till the end. Let's get started. Why does every single content about anti gravity on YouTube says that this phenomenon does not exist? We've talked about this for a long period of time, especially in my latest videos. When it comes to approving uh, the anti gravity phenomenon, this can even cost you a life. Because in this modern fuel world, you don't have a single idea about this massive economic crisis you can cause when you do publish these secrets of anti-gravity to the public. So, whenever you hear someone saying that this anti-gravity phenomenon does not exist, it doesn't mean that he doesn't know the truth. But the reality seems like the modern scientists are programmed to say that they don't know anything about it or they totally don't believe it's real. If you even remember the story of Otis T. Carr, he was charged $5,000 for selling his five models to other individuals by fraud. The OTC Enterprise didn't have enough money to pay the price, so Otis T. Carr was prisoned for 14 years in jail due to selling fraud, but the information gained says that in 14 years Carr was prisoned, he spent 7 years uh, working for the US government. And as I read this, the information says that after a few years when Otis was released, he died later. So according to what the information here is written, it seems like when you do tell the government about this anti gravity phenomenon and give them the formula, they don't need you anymore. So in order to silence you, they immediately kill you so you won't tell those secrets to anybody else. That is actually what they did to Otis T. Carr. These guys are everywhere. Even the YouTube system doesn't want you to share these types of information. And that is why channels like mine are not getting a lot of views as they should. So you as my viewer, if you find my videos uh, interesting, uh, please show them to other people who may be interested. This will help the channel grow and be recognized by other people. So let's get back to the point. I don't even know this is not gonna get my channel blocked, but today I'm gonna share with you something even John Seal and these other scientists didn't talk about. This is something that I didn't talk about in all my latest videos and I know you will understand it. But before you go a little farther, I think you already know that almost everything on Earth is affected by the magnetic fields. Whether it's a sheet of paper, dust, insects, almost everything. There's even other YouTube videos talking about this. Uh, and this actually got me wondering about the air molecules. Can air molecules also be affected by the magnetic fields? We will check about that later because I have the Google search results about this. Uh, back to what I was saying. Well, maybe you are asking yourself why I'm more concerned about the air molecules. But before I talk about anything else, you have to keep in mind that whenever you are dealing with these anti-gravity phenomena, levitation and those energies, the air molecules come first in the list. I don't think you get it, but your main goal when it comes to the anti-gravity platform's analysis is to find a way how the produced magnetic fields will work with the conductive air. This takes me to these mistakes that some of you still make when you are analyzing uh, these anti-gravity platforms. The first one is to think that the earth is a giant magnet. This one is the worst uh, energy that I've ever seen. Think about this. In order to have a free walking prototype, you will first need to figure out the magnetic powers of the earth. And when you do find them, you also need to make your own magnetic poles, which will repel with the Earth's magnetic poles. If that was real, even the magnets with the same polarity pressed on the ground in that area would also gravitate. And there are some areas of the Earth where there is low electromagnetic fields, which means the anti-gravity could not 
happen there because if we already know that this depends on the magnetic fields of the earth then if there is a low electromagnetic fields in that area there will be no anti-gravity and that is not true i think you don't believe that too because these ufos visit any area they want so if the energies which describe the earth as a giant magnet was real many of these ufos would fall on the ground depending on the magnetic fields of the earth depending on the polarity of the earth depending on the amount of magnetic fields in the area the second wrong analysis is to think that the earth's electrostatic charge will get your platform off the ground so according to how this analysis is arranged we have positive charge on the ionosphere and the negative charge on the ground and i totally believe this one is real but the biggest mistake is here if you want to get gravitation here on the ground first of all you will need to produce a lot of negative charge underneath your craft and at a certain level of those charge, they will start to repair the Earth's negative charge. That is not true because if you were using only the electrostatic charge to gain gravitation, you will not find that amount of electrostatic charge that will lift your craft above the ground. And if you do find them, they, they can even crack you apart. So that is not a better idea though. Then let's get to the third mistake. Where people think that you will need to create your own gravity in order to repair Earth's gravity. That is not true. Whenever you see a UFO flying in the sky, it is not using these imaginary fields of the earth which we don't really know they exist to gravitate. But the main important thing here is the air surrounding that craft. But if you already know that almost everything on earth is affected by the magnetic field, this is your first step toward the success. Because here are the answers that I got when I asked Google search if air can be magnetized or be affected by the magnetic fields. This is what they told me. Yes, air can be magnetized but only very weakly and only when the magnetic fields are present. This is actually what we needed. When you throw an umbrella in the air and you try to immediately bring it back down on the ground, you feel some kind of force which is trying to keep the umbrella in the air. So that is actually the amount of force we also need to gain gravitation underneath our little prototype. But we're not gonna be using ordinary air as the umbrella did, but we use the strong electromagnetic fields to affect the highly conducted area. If we were able to affect the normal and conducted area but very weakly, then our second effective way is to apply the electrostatic charge in that air in an organized way. And when the air is already conducted, then the last method is to use the strong electromagnetic fields resonating at the same frequency as the applied electrostatic charge to dilate to affect the highly conducted air medium, as we already did on the normal and conducted air. By using this type of analysis and carrying out these experiments, even when you don't get the full anti-gravity effect, we will figure out something bigger. Another thing which is actually important is the directions and the polarities of electrostatic charge and the electromagnetic field, which plays a big role in the levitation of the craft, but we will talk about that later in the upcoming videos on my channel. Let's talk about the OTCX-1. When I think of Thomas Townsend Brown, I directly get the idea of how Odyssey Car X1 would use his principles in the air. The first one is to perform the running returns using church. When we finally get the OTC X1 in the air, that is great. But we don't have any idea of how we should control its movement in the air. And that is actually what Thomas Townsend solved by using church. In order to perform the movement in the air, where the craft can go wherever it wants, you need to arrange the polarities of electrostatic charge in every dilation you want the craft to go to.